Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, make us worthy to enter your house with diligence, to knock at your door with confidence, and to worship you in your sanctuary with all sincerity. Answer us with kindness and respond to our petitions from the treasury of your mercy. Then we shall glorify you with joy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the psalm. We we'll use our normal tone 2D. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out all my transgressions. O wash me completely from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. My transgressions are you know them, my sin is always me. Yes, you delight in sincerity of heart. In secret you teach me wisdom. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Restore in me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. I will teach transgressors your ways, that sinners may return to you. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offerings from me will not please you. My sacrifice to God, a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart, O oh God, you will not spurn. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord and honor the most opportunity. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the chalice of salvation, which was filled on Golgotha. Sinners drank from it, and they are, were, and are pardoned with the blood of forgiveness that poured out forth from the cross. All people were marked and escaped death. As this chalice united to his holy body will be blessed and consecrated for the pardon of faults, and for the forgiveness of sins for his flock. We raise glory and honor to the Good One on this day and all the days of our lives and forever. O Christ, our God, in your great and unspeakable love for all people, you became our sacrifice on Golgotha. By offering yourself, you pardon the sin of the whole world. You enabled weak and sinful people to receive your body and your life-giving blood. You have made us worthy of offering you acceptable sacrifices, 
in memory of your saving passion and of your glorious resurrection. You have given us this sign for the purification of our souls and of our bodies. With the prophet David we cry out and we say, I shall receive the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. O merciful Lord, we now implore your goodness to consecrate this chalice mixed with wine and with water. Through the holiness of its union to your sacred body, may it become a chalice of thanksgiving and salvation for all those who drink from it and are purified. May it become a chalice which is a pledge of new life for us. May it become a chalice which unites us to the guest of your holy banquet. May it become a chalice which opens to us the gates of your heavenly kingdom. May it forgive our faults and pardon our sins. Through it may we share with the faithful departed in the joy which will never end. We raise our voices to thank you, O Christ, and through you and with you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Kadishant Aloho Kadishant Chayel Antono Kadishant Lomo Yuto Mishiho Destilab Techloho Fein Itracham Listen to your holy scriptures. 
to you be glory forever. Amen. With great honor, Joseph took our Lord's body from the cross. By this action he made known, favor passed from Israel. Host of angels stood in awe, and in fear beheld the sight. With great honor, Joseph took our Lord's body from the cross. Angels sang our Savior's praise as they stood around the tomb. People of the earth proclaimed, Lord, you have saved us by your death. A reading from the letter of Hebrews. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight the path for your feet, that so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with everyone and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it may become defiled. See to it that no one becomes like Esu, an immoral and godless person who sold his birthright for a single meal. You know that later, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, even though he sought the blessings with tears. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and a darkness and gloom and a tempest and a sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken for them, to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble in fear. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and they broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he had already died. They did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers opened his side with a lance, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is both speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it shall be broken. And again in another passage it says, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced.
They shall look upon him whom they have pierced. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, of course, we witness and are part of one of the most ancient liturgies in the Church of Christ in any church throughout the world. And on this solemn day, of course, with the readings of St. John, as I mentioned to you on Sunday, St. John's Gospel is quite distinct from the other three. And he writes decades after the other three in order to point out that the death of our Lord is a revelation. It's not a tragedy that finishes with victory. It's not a human story in that sense for St. John. The story is that this is the hour. This is the reason why God entered into time to accomplish precisely this goal of revelation. And the summation and the fulfillment of all that moment moves to the opening of our Lord's side and the revelation of his sacred heart. And the blood and the water that comes forth, the Father is for them, it's the waters of baptism. And the blood is the Eucharist. But it is also from that open side and revelation of the divine heart of our Lord, which is also the birth of the new Eve, who is the church, created from the side of the new Adam as he slept on the cross. So it's all filled with all kinds of symbolism. And of course, this liturgy normally, this year, because of circumstances, is a bit mutilated. Because normally on Thursday, though even this year, it's been a gift from our Lord. So once we were all told to stay in place and stay home, God had it rain for like three days nonstop, so you didn't really want to go out anyway. And for those who are at home, who are locked down, who are unable to obviously make it to the divine liturgy, God made it snow in an unbelievable way and very strangely almost the middle of April last night. And so we have a bit better today. But of course, last night and today are actually linked. And normally, as I've explained to you, last night would have finished with a procession of the Blessed Sacrament around the inside of the church and into St. Jude's Chapel. And St. Jude's Chapel will normally be beautified with more flowers and radiant because it's meant that during that night, following the Mass, we spend time, do a holy hour, we spend time personally in gratitude and thanksgiving for this great gift which is the Eucharist. Because it is our Lord. It's not just simply a ceremony. It's not just simply a ritual. It's our Lord Jesus Christ personally present. We say our, we love our Lord and how easy it is for us to ignore him. And so last night we talked about that ignoring and how the word itself ignore means not to know. Of course, for us, it means to kind of shun somebody, to ignore somebody. But of course, if you do shun someone, you're not going to know them. If we don't speak to them, if we don't communicate with them, it's clear there will never be any friendship, let alone intimacy of friendship, ever developed. And so normally on Thursday night, we'd have the Blessed Sacrament in adoration for a few hours after the Mass. People could spend time alone, or with others, obviously, but praying in the chapel. And in many places where it's been Catholic, there was a custom that you would spend that night actually going from parish to parish. People walked among the parishes to go and see how they decorated their Eucharistic altar and spend some time there, and then walk to the next one. In Chicago, it's a huge, still to this day, though obviously the ceremonies have been a bit reduced, but still, I have friends in Chicago, and you have groups of people who will go together, and they will walk through the neighborhoods of Chicago, going from chapel, church to church to their side altars, well into the early morning. And the beauty of it is, is that on this day, that blessed sacrament will be brought back from the chapel because it links together that night of our Lord's arrest with the day of his death because that Eucharistic reality is the death and resurrection of our Lord. It is the simultaneity of that mystery of redemption, which is both our Lord's death. St. John makes it clear that when our Lord dies, he says, it is finished. It is consummated. Everything has been done now. Then St. John tells us, 
He lowers his head and he dies. So our Lord wants us to understand through this Gospel of St. John that profound aspect of revelation, which is why St. John adds these Old Testament readings. They shall look upon the one whom they have pierced, that not one bone of him shall be broken. That's actually referring, under the time of Moses, to the Paschal Lamb. That the lamb had to be a yearling, it had to be without blemish, it had to be male, and it had to be sacrificed in a way and also consumed all in that night and what remained after that meal had to be burned, destroyed. Nothing had to linger, nothing could linger till the next day. But not one bone, not one blemish was meant to take place to bring about the lamb's death. And so it refers to not one bone is to be broken of it or of him, of the lamb, the yearling. And St. John takes that straight out of that whole story of Passover and the Exodus, and he says, this is true, not about animals. This was said for this Lamb of God who died on Calvary. It's a very beautiful image. And of course, the reason why they break the legs is to make you suffocate because you can't breathe anymore. And that's why St. John tells us when they come, they find that our Lord has already died. And so there is nothing, there's no reason to break his legs. And he says, but this is not just an accident of history. This is so that those scriptures would be fulfilled because this is the true Lamb of God. And that's why the linking of these two ceremonies as the Blessed Sacrament would be brought out of that place of glory and beauty and brought into this place of black on this Good Friday. So what we will do today, in fact, because the Blessed Sacrament is just on the altar, normally it would be empty. We will remove the Blessed Sacrament and we'll actually go one time around the altar just to have something of that similarity. And, oh, bread of life, I think you know it's in the book. But it's important for us when we look at this, what our Lord is accomplishing for us, because it's a revelation of his divine love. And the trials that come in our lives, whether they be personal, whether they be pandemics, whether they be historical economic disasters, whatever they may be, as I mentioned to you last night, God is always present. The Eucharist is instituted to remain not only present because God's everywhere, but to remain present as God incarnate as the man who walked 2,000 years on the, ago on the face of the earth. That it's not just something that we commemorate that was done once for us centuries ago, but it's a reality of a divine presence which is with us always, or let us say, is always present to us, as I said last night, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, and those who wish to avail themselves of this mystery. And so on this day, let us keep it solemnly. Let us keep it in one of reflection, and of a consideration that God has done all these things to let us know that we are never alone, that we are never left in isolation, and no one is ever left to his own strength. God created us from nothing. He draws us to the infinitude of divine love, if we wish it, that friendship. And in between all of that, of course he is with us. No one is ever left in isolation. So let us reflect upon this death and reflect upon this Eucharistic reality that our Lord leaves us with his presence to be engaged with him and to be one with him. And then when that has sunk really well into our souls, then we ourselves should become a consolation to others who themselves perhaps do not see these truths and who live in fear and anxiety. For the disciples of our Lord, and St. John says later on, the same writer of this gospel says later on in his letters, where love is present and love is true, love casts out fear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So please stand. We'll continue on page 32. 
יתל ווט מדב הידה לו הוא, ואל ווט הלו חודם חדי תיוט, ואינו מסובו תיירו תוך אל בל בית אפס קודם, חייק לו עוד קודש is consecrated for all mortals by the apostles. Behold the chalice of salvation, God's living blood. Come forward, all people, and rejoice, for it absolves those who partake of it. Behold the chalice which satisfies the thirst of the children of God. Those who drink from it are delivered from the flames of Gehenna. Behold the chalice which was prefigured by the chosen nation. But when Jesus came in person, other nations welcomed him with joy. The honorable priest Aaron prefigured this chalice when he sprinkled the blood of animals to signify the blood of the Lord. The prophet Moses prefigured this chalice by the lamb's blood which he sprinkled in Egypt to deliver the children of Israel. On the cross, the side of Christ was pierced and wounded. Blood and water flowed from heaven to pardon all sin. O faithful church, now draw near to him with open hands to receive these gifts. Blood and water witness to the truth of Jesus that he is true God and man. This chalice bless Lord. clothe ourselves with the robe of righteousness, that we may serve your mysteries at the table of your heavenly kingdom with pure thoughts. May our consciences be clothed with holiness, and may we shine with beauty, and may our souls be crowned with faith, hope, and love. O Lord, may our prayer be acceptable to you. In your compassion, may it gain entry to your treasury of goodness, obtain the abundance of your riches, the forgiveness of our sins and the peace and security for your entire flock. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to the Lord.
You are the solid rock from which flow twelve rivers from the twelve tribes of Israel. May the love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, make us worthy to praise, adore, Almighty Father, your glorious Son, and your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. May the peace of God, the Almighty Father, security of the Son who governs all, and the communion of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies and pardons all, be with us and among us all the days of our lives, with this altar and with our offering, and with your church and her children, now and forever. Amen. Let us all stand devoutly in praise and thank our Savior. The sun clothed itself with morning and rocks, melted away when they witnessed the Lord of creation hanging on the cross. Lord, have mercy. We present this offering and the commemoration and this prayer of the everlasting God, the Ancient of Days for the living and for the dead, for those who are far and for those who are near, for churches, monasteries, and convents in every district and region, and for us who are weak and sinful. Though we are unworthy, you have made us worthy to stand before you and to be remembered in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for those whom we remember today and for those here with us in faith, awaiting your abundant mercy. For our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, and for sinners. We present this pure and holy offering to you, O God the Father, Almighty Lord. It is right and just. Yes, Lord, it is truly right and just that our minds and hearts be always lifted up to the heights. They are lifted up to you, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, glorious and holy King forever. To you, O God of Abraham, Savior of Isaac, and Comforter of Jacob, glorious and holy King forever. It is right and just to thank, worship, and praise you. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, sign us with your holy cross, and make us worthy of your festival, when you shall appear in glory. Extend your right hand of your mercy over all this place and over all its faithful inhabitants. Guard them with your victorious cross from the evil one, and his power and glory be to you, O Lord our God. In the presence of these divine mysteries we pray. Son and the Holy Spirit.
created. You created the world by your grace and its inhabitants in your love and compassion. You have saved all people by your mercy and have given your grace to mortal beings. Heavenly beings without number worship your divinity. Beings of light and spirit praise you. Cherubim and seraphim bless and sanctify you. O Lord, by your grace, make us worthy to say with them. Holy, 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 mighty Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your great glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who has come and will come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed are you, O fruit of the Holy Spirit, gathered from the blessed vine of Mary. Pressed in the sterile city of Jerusalem, mixed in the chalice of salvation, and offered for the Holy Church. Those who pressed it were scattered and prevented from drinking from it. But those who drink it rejoice and they sing all praises. O most holy one, allow us to approach these holy mysteries and accomplish this Eucharist of the saving passion of your only begotten Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ. May we remember his death and proclaim his resurrection and complete his entire mystery of salvation with true thanksgiving. For your living and holy name is blessed and worthy of all praise, now and forever. Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We profess our faith in you and we ask you. Have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. O Lord God, remember Mary and through her pure and holy prayers. Have mercy and compassion on us and answer us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification and rest upon this Eucharist to consecrate it. Let us stand with reverence as we pray.
We pray and implore you, O Lord God, that this solemn and holy moment for our fathers who lead us in this life and for those who govern the church, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Shara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember all the true and faithful Christians, our brothers and sisters who have asked us, weak though we are, to pray for them. We remember those who are subject to difficulties and who take refuge in you. Visit and deliver them. We pray for this place which God guards and for the peace and spiritual growth of those who live here, that they may live in prosperity. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember all true Christian leaders who have built churches, monasteries, and convents in all parts of the world. We pray for all Christians in their public activities and services, the clergy and all the faithful, that they may lead holy lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Blessed Virgin, the Mother, Mother of God. With her we remember the prophets, <coughs> apostles, evangelists, disciples, martyrs and confessors, John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner of the Savior, Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all the saints. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember all those who have died and are among the saints, especially those who have preserved and given us this apostolic faith. We proclaim the four holy ecumenical councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, Ephesus, and Chalcedon. We remember all our glorious fathers and faithful doctors of the church who dwell with God. St. James, brother of the Lord, the illustrious apostle, martyr, and bishop. Ignatius, Dionysus, Athanius, Basil, Gregory, Timothy, Euthanias, John, and especially Cyril, the Tower of Truth, the Chosen of God, Saint Marin, our Blessed Father, Saint James and Saint Ephraim, both pillars of our Holy Church, and for all those who kept the true faith and passed it on to us. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember also all the faithful who have died in the true faith and who dwell with you. We implore Christ our Lord who has called them to pardon their sins and their faults, and to lead them and us to his heavenly kingdom. We proclaim three times. reserved 
for the blessed and everlasting feast, for they will praise your glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory. Lord God, we are not worthy to stand in your presence, but through the priesthood you have made us worthy to stand before you and present this offering to your name. 
The cherubim and seraphim who were created to serve you dare not approach you. Isaiah witnessed the seraph lifting a coal from the tongs from the altar to his lips. You have shown us in your great mercy when you lowered yourself and in your love you came down to the level of our weakness. O Lord Jesus Christ, may your cross be our guard against the evil one and his power forever. Lord, purify us from every stain of soul and body that we may be united to you in purity and in holiness. You loved us and brought us back to you that we may stand before you and call upon you with the pure and holy prayer that you taught your disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. O oh Lord, we ask you through your grace to place your truth within our hearts, your love within our consciences, and your mercy within our souls. May we share in your kingdom with the guest of your feast, clothed with your body the white robe of joy. Having conquered Gehenna and having been delivered from death, let us dwell in your light with all your saints. We raise glory to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the Lord. O oh Lord, we bow our heads before you, before your forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We worship the glorious Trinity, and we ask through your grace, love, compassion, and mercy, compassion and forgiveness of all our sins. Hear our prayers and be attentive to our petitions. Answer our requests from the abundant treasury of your mercy. Make us worthy to come forward in all purity and holiness, to receive the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise the glorious Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask Him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory. The host of angels have come to stand before us at the holy altar. They sing the chorus and carry the 
Christ the Lamb, sacrifice before us. O come, receive him, the saving Lamb of God.
We give you thanks, O living, thy living Lamb of God. You came down to earth from heaven. Clothed yourself with the body of our humanity and died for the life and salvation of all people. Prophets, kings yearned to see you burn, but were unable. Yet you let us weak sinners receive you in our human hands and be purified by you. We praise you for your awesome majesty and your goodness toward us. You are a burning fire carried by our hands and the living ember touched by our lips. Purify, O oh Lord, the mouth, the lips, and the hands of those who held your body. Sanctify the body, souls, and spirits of those who have received your blood. Purify their hearts, their thoughts, and purify their hearts, their thoughts, and spirits, and all their senses. Mark them with the seal of your holy cross, and place within them your hidden power. O Lord, our God, to you be glory, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless and sanctify and forgive and protect the faithful who have participated in this divine service of the holy mysteries. May God forgive them, their brothers and sisters, and their departed. May God save us from confusion and shame before him on the day of judgment forever and ever.